So there was a long history of museums before 1893, particularly in Europe. When we think about the earliest museums in the world, we can probably go back to the Vatican Museum in 1506 when the, uh, the papal collections were open to the people of Rome. Uh, and then there are uh, a whole series of museums that opened in, uh, in the wake of the Enlightenment in the second half of the, the 18th century. Uh, museums such as the, the British Museum in 1753, and uh, the Uffizi Gallery in 1763. The Louvre was founded in the, as a direct result of the uh, French Revolution in 1793. So, um, the Arizona State Museum, the Arizona Territorial Museum is pretty much of a Johnny-come-lately, except it fits very well into the history of American museums. Uh, we had a whole uh, with series of museums that were founded in the second half in the latter decades of the 19th century, um, but the history of museums in America goes back to one really unusual museum that didn't last very long, and that was in Philadelphia, called the Philadelphia Museum founded by Charles Wilson Peale. And uh, he was a very a unique person. 1796, he had this concept uh, looking to the museums of Europe, the museums of the Enlightenment age that were being founded. He had this idea that uh, this new young republic should have a museum. Uh, and it was really a, what we would call a cabinet of curiosities with mastodon bones and uh, odd pieces of nat natural history specimens that were collected in various parts of, the, of uh, America in that period. And uh, it was very modern in the concept of uh, its educational role. There, was, there were subscriptions. You could be a member of this museum. You could come to, um, to lectures. There was a whole series of public programs and was open to the public free of charge. And unfortunately, his sons, who were many of whom were named after famous painters, Raphael, Rubens, Titian, um, didn't share his interest in um, the museum. And so uh, it closed by the 1840s. The, uh, the Philadelphia Museum of Charles Wilson Peale no longer existed, and the collections were sold off to people like P.T. Barnum. They were oddities and belonged sort of in a circus-like uh, atmosphere. Uh, the Smithsonian is probably the next uh, museum of a major note that we should uh, think about, and uh, that was the result of the bequest of a British scientist named James Smithson uh, in the 1820s, who gave uh, a sum of money to the United States government for the founding of a museum. And it was, uh, we think about the Smithsonian and the early Smithsonian museums as being natural history museums, but this early Smithsonian was an art and natural history uh, museum. And the, uh, the first uh, castle building, which burned down, but the first building on the mall was in 1846. It was uh, in the aftermath of the Civil War that the uh, major museums in the United States were founded. And we can think about the Metropolitan Museum of Art, for example, in New York, and the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, both founded in 1870. Uh, and uh, what we would regard as the, the major encyclopedic museums in America. Uh, the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art had its sister institution on the other side of Central Park, the American Museum of Natural History, and it was more or less founded at the same time. And the, the early notion was that, that this should be, uh, these two purposes, the art and the natural history, should be joined together in a single institution, and then they decided that they would, uh, they would part ways and, and the, par the Central Park would separate um, their, uh, their missions, as it were. Um, there were um, a group of university museums that were founded uh, in this period, uh, the earliest university museum, and no accident that these early museums were anthropology, archaeology museums. Uh, the Peabody Museum at Harvard was probably the, the first in the United States in the 1860s, uh, followed by the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology in 1887, uh, and then um, the Arizona State Museum or the Arizona Territorial Museum followed quickly after that. The, um, 
this this notion of uh, these these early museums in the second half of the 19th century, uh, why were why did they exist? Why did they come to be during that that time? Uh, and it was a vastly changing world of that that period of major industrialization in the United States. The society was changing rapidly. And museums were conceived of as uh, places of um, where the, the general public could be educated. So education was really the primary mission of those early museums, uh, more than this notion that we have uh, now that uh, museums are sort of temples of treasures and places where you know major collections are held and exhibited. The, uh, the educational mission of those early museums was all important. So it makes a lot of sense that the, uh, these early university museums were founded, that these, these anthropology, archaeology museums were founded on university campuses, the Peabody at Harvard, uh, the University of Pennsylvania Museum, and then the Arizona Territorial Museum was uh, given its home here on the campus of the University of Arizona in the only building that existed on the campus in those years, Old Main.